Blood of Christ in Christian theology refers to a the physical blood actually shed by Jesus Christ primarily on the cross, and the salvation which Christianity teaches was accomplished thereby, and b the sacramental blood present in the Eucharist or Lord's Supper, which is considered by Catholic, Orthodox, Anglican, and Lutheran Christians to be the same blood of Christ shed on the cross. The Roman Catholic Church, Eastern Orthodox Churches, the Oriental Orthodox Churches, the Assyrian Church of the East, and Lutherans, together with some Anglicans, believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. The Roman Catholic Church uses the term, "...transubstantiation", to describe the change of the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. Eastern Orthodox to have authoritatively used the same term to describe the change, as in the Longer Catechism of the Orthodox, Catholic, Eastern Church and in the decrees of the 1672 Synod of Jerusalem, the Lutheran churches follow the teaching of Martin Luther in defining the presence of Christ in the Eucharistic elements as sacramental union often misconstrued as consubstantiation, meaning that the fundamental substance of the body and blood of Christ are literally present alongside the substance of the bread and wine, which remain present. Lutherans too believe in and teach the real presence. Most Protestant churches reject the idea of the real presence, they observe Eucharistic rites as simply memorials. History In the early church, the faithful received the Eucharist in the form of consecrated bread and wine. Saint Maximus explains that in the Old Law the flesh of the sacrificial victim was shared with the people, but the blood of the sacrifice was merely poured out on the altar. Under the New Law, however, Jesus' blood was the drink shared by all of Christ's faithful. Saint Justin Martyr, an early church father of the second century, speaks of the Eucharist as the same body and blood of Christ that was present in his incarnation. The tradition continued in the Church in the East to commingle the species of bread and wine, whereas in the West, the Church had the practice of communion under the species of bread and wine separately as the custom, with only a small fraction of bread placed in the chalice. In the West, the communion at the chalice was made less and less efficient, as the dangers of the spread of disease and danger of spillage which would potentially be sacrilegious were considered enough of a reason to remove the chalice from common communion altogether, or giving it on only special occasions. However, it was always consecrated and drunk by the priest, regardless of whether or not the laity partook. This was one of the main issues in the Protestant Reformation. As a consequence, the Catholic Church first wanted to eliminate ambiguity, reaffirming that Christ was present both as body and as blood equally under both species of bread and wine. As time went on, the chalice was made more available to the laity. After the Second Vatican Council, the Catholic Church gave a full permission for all to receive communion from the chalice at every Mass involving a congregation, at the discretion of the priest. Theology Roman Catholic The Catholic Church teaches that the bread and wine, through transubstantiation, become the body, blood, soul and divinity of Christ—in other words, the whole Christ—when consecrated. Until its removal from the general Roman calendar in 1969, the Feast of the Most Precious Blood was assigned to July 1. Devotion to the precious blood was a special phenomenon of Flemish piety in the 15th and 16th centuries, that gave rise to the iconic image of grace as the fountain of life", filled with blood, pouring from the wounded, "'Lamb of God", or the "'Holy Wounds' of Christ. The image, which was the subject of numerous Flemish paintings was in part spurred by the renowned relic of the precious blood, which had been noted in Bruges at least since the 12th century and which gave rise, from the late 13th century, to the observances, particular to Bruges, of the procession of the "'Saint Sang' from its chapel. Prayers Various prayers are part of the Roman Catholic devotion to the precious blood. Those that mention the blood include the Anima Christi, the Chaplet of Mercy of the Holy Wounds of Jesus, and the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. <laughs> precious blood prayer May the most precious blood which flowed from the most holy wounds of our loving Lord Jesus pour over us to wash, cleanse, purify, heal, guide and protect us from all evil, harm, sickness and bless and make us as holy as we can be. We ask this in the holy name of Jesus 
and through his most precious blood and his most holy wounds. Amen. Topic: <laughs> Litany of the Most Precious Blood. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. God, the Father of heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Ghost, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Blood of Christ, only begotten Son of the Eternal Father, save us. Blood of Christ, incarnate Word of God, save us. Blood of Christ, of the New and Eternal Testament, save us. Blood of Christ, falling upon the earth in the agony, save us. Blood of Christ, shed profusely in the scourging, save us. Blood of Christ, flowing forth in the crowning with thorns, save us. Blood of Christ, poured out on the cross, save us. Blood of Christ, price of our salvation, save us. Blood of Christ, without which there is no forgiveness, save us. Blood of Christ, Eucharistic drink and refreshment of souls, save us. Blood of Christ, stream of mercy, save us. Blood of Christ, victor over demons, save us. Blood of Christ, courage of martyrs, save us. Blood of Christ, strength of confessors, save us. Blood of Christ, bringing forth virgins, save us. Blood of Christ, help of those in peril, save us. Blood of Christ, relief of the burdened, save us. Blood of Christ, solace in sorrow, save us. Blood of Christ, hope of the penitent, save us. Blood of Christ, consolation of the dying, save us. Blood of Christ, peace and tenderness of hearts, save us. Blood of Christ, pledge of eternal life, save us. Blood of Christ, freeing souls from purgatory, save us. Blood of Christ, most worthy of all glory and honor, save us, Lamb of God, who talkest away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who talkest away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God, who talkest away the sins of the world, have mercy on us, thou hast redeemed us, O Lord, in thy blood, and made us, for our God, a kingdom. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who didst appoint thine only begotten Son the Redeemer of the world, and hast willed to be appeased by his blood, grant unto us, we beseech thee, so to venerate with solemn worship the price of our redemption, and by its power be so defended against the evils of this life, that we may enjoy the fruit thereof forevermore in heaven. Through the same Lord Jesus Christ, thy Son, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, God, world without end. Amen. Eastern Orthodox The Orthodox teach that what is received in Holy Communion is the actual resurrected body and blood of Jesus Christ. In the West, the words of institution are considered to be the moment at which the bread and wine become the body and blood of Christ. But for the Orthodox there is no one defined moment, rather, all that Orthodox theology states is that by the end of the Epiclesis, the change has been completed. The Orthodox also do not use the Latin theological term transubstantiation to define the conversion from bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ, they use the word metousia without the precise theological elaboration that accompanies the term transubstantiation. According to St. John Damascene, the sacred mysteries under the form of bread and wine do not become incorruptible until they are actually received in faith by a believing Christian in a state of grace. Devotion. In the Eastern Orthodox churches, and those Eastern Catholic churches which follow the Byzantine Rite, there is no individual devotion to the blood of Christ separate from the body of Christ, or separated from the reception of Holy Communion. When receiving Holy Communion, the clergy deacons, priests and bishops will receive the body of Christ separately from the blood of Christ. Then, the remaining portions of the consecrated lamb host is divided up and placed in the chalice and both the body and blood of Christ are communicated to the faithful using a liturgical spoon see also in tinction. <laughs> Artistic depictions The blood shed by Christ was a common theme in early modern Italian art. Paintings of Christ depicted on the cross and as the Man of Sorrows have consistently been some of the bloodiest images in Christian art. 
The blood of Christ was a compelling artistic symbol of his incarnation and sacrifice. As a theme for contemplation, it provided worshippers with a means articulate their devotion. Topic relics of the blood around the world Basilica of the Holy Blood, Bruges, Belgium Weingarten Abbey, Germany Abbey of the Holy Trinity, Feykamp, France St. James's Church, Rothenburg Ob der Tauber, Germany Basilica di Sant'Adria di Mantova, Mantua, Italy The Sidarium of Oviedo The Shroud of Turin The Relic of the Holy Blood, Westminster, England Topic See also Anglican Eucharistic Theology Blood of Jesus Christ Military Order Body of Christ Eucharist Missionaries of the Precious Blood Precious Blood Catholic Church Church Feast of the Most Precious Blood New Covenant I Core Topic References Topic Further reading Faber, Frederick William. The Precious Blood, or, The Price of Our Salvation. 5th ed., 1860. London, Burns and Oates, Baltimore, John Murphy. Reprint, Rockford, Illinois, Tan Books, 1979. ISBN 0-895-55075-X Sollier, J. F. Precious Blood. In Herbermann, Charles. Catholic Encyclopedia. New York, Robert Appleton Company. Vincent, Nicholas The Holy Blood, King Henry III and the Westminster Blood Relic. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 0-521-57128-6. Heinlein, Michael An Early Image of a Mass of St. Gregory and Devotion to the Holy Blood at Weingarten Abbey. Gesta, 37 55–62. JSTOR 767212. Bynum, Caroline Walker. 2002. The Blood of Christ in the Later Middle Ages. Church History. 71 4, 685 71. doi 10.1017.S0009640700096268. External links Precious Blood Devotions Missionaries of the Precious Blood